Hi, I'm Beth from dryitcanit.com, and today I want to show you what I do with leftover tomato paste. I think we all end up with this. Have you ever seen a recipe that calls for a whole can of it? Anyway, I've done the thing where I put it in the ice cubes a container and put it in the freezer, and inevitably it gets freezer burned and it all doesn't get used. But I've got a trick to show you how to use it and save it long term. You take your tomato paste, you spread it on parchment paper or on a dehydrator tray, you put it in the dehydrator, you dry it, you powder it, and let me tell you, you've got tomato paste or tomato sauce whenever you need it. So let me show you how this is done. All right, so lots of dehydrators will come with what they call fruit leather trays, which are basically some kind of a tray with a little bit of a lip. It would certainly be a lot easier to put my tomato paste on this and it would work fine, I kind of like my tray white and tomato paste tends to stain and so I use parchment paper and I use it on a rack that is a good size rack and it still works fine. So when you have leftover tomato paste or even if you just want to buy a couple cans of tomato paste and make tomato powder, it's really simple. Cut some parchment paper to the size of your racks is the first step that you want to do. Then simply take your tomato paste and a spatula and put it on the parchment paper and spread it out. Now this is gonna take a little bit of a time and sometimes your paper is gonna move around a little bit on you, so I'm not gonna tell you that this is always easiest, but it really doesn't take more than a few minutes. I remember when I was really young, we'd have finger painting on paper, and in some respects this reminds me of that, except for I'm not using my fingers. But I usually just put my tomato paste in the center and then spread it out accordingly. Now I have two racks already in the dehydrator and this is the bottom of it. But I would say on average, at least for my dehydrator, my trays are probably mm, about 12 by 13 maybe. I can get about 10 ounces of tomato paste on each one. And what you wanna do basically is just spread this out as evenly as you possibly can. You're not gonna get it perfect and it's not a perfect science and that's okay. And in some respects, I don't even have the best tool right now to do this. But I'm just going to spread it out fairly, fairly thin, but enough that, that I can pick it up afterwards. Because as this dries, it's going to dry into a sheet of tomato, so to speak. And when it's dry enough in the center, then I tend to peel it off the paper and flip it over and then put it in the dehydrator to get that center dry. So one trick I have is to take the center of your paper and make that just a little bit thinner than the rest of it. And that is part of the reason I start from the middle and then just sort of spread it out. For some re well, for, for obvious reasons, I guess, the part in the middle is going to take a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna get the rest of this tomato paste off of my fingers like so. And really, I think I'm good to go. This is fairly thin, and I'm simply going to move my tray over, pick up the paper, and then slide it onto my tray, and then I'll be able to put it in the dehydrator. Now, because this is a vegetable, I'm going to dehydrate it at 125 degrees, and it's going to be 125 degrees until it's done. I'll know it's done when that sheet is dry, and I can pick it up, and it'll be fairly thin, and then I'll crumble it up, and I will condition it for a few days, and once it's conditioned, then I'll go ahead and powder it. So I'm going to go ahead and dehydrate this. I don't expect this to be done until tomorrow. When it is done, I'm going to show you what I have. I may show you in between what the sheet looks like as it's, as it's drying, and uh, then I'll show you how to make the powder and tell you how to use that. So if you have tomato paste, this is a great trick to use it. This works equally well on tomato sauce or diced tomatoes. I use diced tomatoes quite often where I'll just spread them on a tray and I'll dehydrate those because I can use those in some of my dry meals. In fact, I think I have a recipe coming up for that uh, relatively soon. So stay tuned and um, I'll show you how to finish this project up once, once this is dry. Tomato paste is completely dry. I feel, peeled it off the paper after about five hours and then put it on the rack, turning it over so that the bottom would dry. And basically what I have is four sheets of tomato paste, relatively thin, but crispy. So what will happen now is I will break all of this up and put it into a jar and then let it condition for a few days. 
All right, I am back with my conditioned tomato paste, conditioned dehydrated tomato paste. I've been rolling my jar regularly to make sure it doesn't stick. Sometimes when you, when you ha are working with tomato paste, you might get a few pieces that stick up on top. If you just give it a bang and it falls down, that's just compression, so don't worry about that. My goal was always to make tomato paste here. So this was 24 ounces of tomato paste and it gave me probably about a cup and a half of flakes. But my goal is to get down to powder. So my next step really is to take these tomato flakes, these dehydrated tomato flakes, and then put them in a blender. I have a, a coffee blender, grinder, I guess I should say, that I dedicate just to uh, everything that I want to go ahead and make to a powder. Um, and so I'm just gonna put it in here and I'm going to grind it to a powder. When you're doing this, you wanna pulse it a little bit to start with and then grind it. And you do need to keep in mind that the, the rotation of the rotor is going to produce some heat, which could introduce some moisture. So generally, I'm going to condition my powder afterwards too. But to get started, just pulse it a little bit and you'll see already how much it breaks down. I filled this up, I need to unplug this to get it over there. But it already, you know, broke down considerably. As you get this into a powder, and when you're done and you wanna take this out, let this sit for about 10 minutes before you open the container. The reason being is that powder becomes airborne and you don't wanna be inhaling that. So that's just a little tip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind, grind all this down. I'm going to measure it so I know how much powder I have and then I'll be back to show you the end result. Okay, so this is the last batch of powdered tomato. So, and you can see it looks like it has little clumps in it. Maybe you aren't gonna be able to see that. And what I do is I just double check that with a spoon and most of the time that just falls apart simply because it's sort of clustered together from the heat. So when I have, now this is a good example here, some of that stuff in there a little bit. When I, when I put this in here, you can see it looks like there are little clumps in there. But if I check those with a spoon, they fall apart instantly, so I know it's not moisture, it's just compaction, so we're good. All right, so of the 24 ounces of tomato paste, I have really exactly one cup, or what looks like about one, exactly one cup of dehydrated tomato paste. I can, I'm going to condition this, again, because of the heat of the grinder, um, but I can use this now for flavoring so many things, and I can make tomato paste or tomato sauce out of this. And I wanna show you how easy that is to do. So I'm gonna take just a very small amount here. And basically the, the combination you wanna use is two to one, two parts water, one part powder to make tomato paste, and four to one, four parts water to one part, um, what did I say, four parts water to one part of tomato powder to make tomato sauce. So I'm just going to add uh, one teaspoon here, and I'm going to add two teaspoons of water. And I'm gonna give that a stir, and I'll show you what that looks like as soon as that absorbs. Take just a minute to uh, kind of stir that up here. And typically that's gonna take a few minutes to, to um, kind of put it, to, to, the powder is going to be fairly fine, so it's going to take a few minutes to absorb. But already you can see what I have here. And this is still a little bit thin, but two to one is usually a pretty good measurement. But you can see, you know, that it's getting thick already for tomato paste. Um, and then to make tomato sauce, you're just gonna add more water. So should have used that spoon, should have used the measuring spoon, but that's okay. Um, and again, I'm just gonna give it a good stir. And I have really the consistency of tomato sauce. So tomato powder is a great thing to have on hand. You can use this exact same, the same method I did to do, to make the powdered tomato with the tomato paste with any kind of canned tomato. You can use diced tomato. You can use tomato sauce. If you have the great big chunks of tomato, I would cut those up a little bit, the whole tomatoes, cut those up a little bit and then um, go ahead and dehydrate them. I take scraps of leftover fresh tomato and throw those in my dehydrator whenever I'm doing some kind of vegetables and I throw those in with my tomato paste. So this is a great way and inexpensive way uh, really to have tomato paste and tomato sauce on hand. Again, when I do tomato paste, it, the recipes are calling a tablespoon or two tablespoons or 
whatever, and it just seems like there's always leftover. This is a nice, easy way to just get what you need, use it, and not go to waste. Shelf life on this is really good. Once it's conditioned and I'm, I'm comfortable that it's still really dry, I'm going to put it in a jar, I'm going to vacuum seal it, I'm gonna put it in the pantry, it's good to go. Um, you do wanna make sure that this stays moisture proof because it will absorb moisture quickly. You can use any kind of a jar. If you have some kind of a jar with a, a little rubber gasket inside, like a jelly jar, spaghetti jar, then that's the best kind of jar to use in terms of making sure that it stays moisture proof. I typically will use a canning jar with a lid and I always reuse my lids for dehydrated foods. So I'm careful about how I take those off. I put mechs on them so I don't reuse them for canning, but I do use them to, to store my dehydrated food. So hopefully you found this helpful. Thumbs up would sure be appreciated. Um, please subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends, and uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.